right, welcome to uh, Energy Boom uh, 101 here. We're going to open it up with the patented sweep shot right there. A kaboom, a cafe plaid. Not a whole lot going on right now. That may change in a couple years. Who knows, a couple minutes. Anyway, uh, Energy Boom 101, where we are indeed connecting crude to consciousness, uh, one gusher at a time. We've also been known on rare occasion to uh, eliminate the uh, chasm of... Uh, of uh, illuminate the chasm between brain and bean one gush at a time and, and I guarantee you we can uh, enjoy the uh, echoes of existence one gush at a time and uh, now comes the big challenge gusher at a time and uh, finally I think we can probably also um, chase the narrative for sure one gush at a time and these will all be uh, these will all make sense these slogans will be uh, sort of sectioned out into different uh, opportunities for uh, individuals that boom you, uh, we'll see. Anyway, uh, since we do, this is Energy Boom 101, where uh, this is the confluence, which is of course where crude oil and cannabis meet. Those are two little booms that are going on right now, and they seem to be splashed all over the newspaper, so we're doing our best to keep up with it. And uh, today, uh, uh, as far as from the um, cannabis, can like the um, cannabis end would be concerned, uh, you have uh, the four-leaf clover here. And at the top of the key, good old CBIS up 1.43 percentile. Uh, FOT, P hot, grow life up 10 percent. Pretty robust inhalation there. Hemp dropping down three and a half percent. And then medical mara up uh, less than one percent. So not much there, uh, but obviously uh, grow life looking pretty strong now. Why? Why'd they go up 10 percent today? I don't know. No one knows what's going on anyway. Don't listen to anyone. But if we do want to connect the crude to the consciousness, we will take it from what happened uh, there, uh, uh, and we'll continue that by showing you that in today's Daily Oklahoman, or the Oklahoman, one of the greatest newspapers ever, bar none, here it comes, uh, there you can see it, huge, uh, they decide to uh, issue a little, just a quick little editorial, potluck, marijuana revenue lagging in Colorado. Yeah, that may be happening, I don't know for sure. Um, I just love the fact that the Oklahoman is covering it, and they're going to take their very conservative stance because they sum it up in one sentence here that would be pretty simple to challenge if you felt like it, but we'll, at least we'll give you the uh, sentence, and then we'll go from there. Uh, if I could even find it. Here we go. That puts educate, uh Getting more money requires more people to engage in an activity with negative consequences. Uh, I would really like you to show me any activity that exists in the world that doesn't have negative consequences. Of course, marijuana has negative consequences. Everything does. What, what the Oklahoman would like to do is pretend like it's just a simple brush and that's the only thing there are with the marijuana industry is negative consequences. But the beautiful thing is you're going to start seeing this lovely newspaper, which is pretty amazing. We use it. Our forensic science team uh, uses it. Crack forensic science team. Here they come, by the way. Shit, there it is. There's that lens that's, that's been polished out by crude oil and cannabis, by optimism and compassion, and it's finding the Oklahoman right there. Boom. Um, we love the newspaper, but we're going to watch how they handle the uh, green boom. It's going to be pretty fun, kids. It's, it's a great newspaper. I'm sure they're all lovely, lovely people that want to help all of us uh, as, as Christians want to do, as Jesus would lead, it, lead us to believe. Uh, look at this. Uh, let's not uh, connect all that cannabis to crude. Here comes the crude. Uh, dwindling crude supply. Yeah, interesting. Check this out. Crude oil stockpiles in Cushing. Cushing's a major stockpile hub in the United States for crude oil. That's where they price some oil. Crude oil stockpiles in Cushing are at their lowest levels in two years after new pipeline projects have begun moving oil more easily to refineries along the Gulf Coast. So get you caught up here quick, kids. A bunch of pipelines are, have been built and are continuing to be built around Oklahoma. And it's taken all, it's just so it's so much easier now to move all the oil that was in Cushing down to the Gulf Coast. But guess what? More oil's coming in. So we'll get to that story uh, later, maybe. Uh, here's something else. Uh, rules could help determine source of state earthquakes. This looks very promising for all you environmentalists out there. Let's see here. The uh, Look at this. The Oklahoma Corporation Commission on Thursday approved new rules that could help determine whether oil and gas operations are connected to the state's earthquake swarm. Okay, good. Let's find out. Let's see what else we get in here. Uh, this is the best, though. Here's a great story. We haven't even got to Oil Patch Jazz, but I've got to get... You've got to check this out. Valve firm accused of unfair practices. This is pretty big, and I'm just going to sort of read a little bit of it. I'd read the whole damn thing if I could, but I don't want to bore you to death. Um, a Chinese oil equipment supplier 
on Thursday was accused of artificially lowering prices by using pirated software. Now this is pretty historic because I think this is probably one of the first cases, if not the first case in Oklahoma, to uh, attack someone for a very simple violation. They're using pirated software. You can read this article, you will learn the allegations that by using the, the allegedly, this is an allegation that the Chinese oil equipment supplier, key term there, Chinese oil, um, uh, that this Chinese oil equipment uh, supplier known as Niwei Valve Company used unlicensed software to help it sell its products for significantly less than Oklahoma valve manufacturers serving the oil and natural gas industry. Here we go, folks. The game is on, and these are all allegations, and all we can tell you right now to give you a good overview of what's happening in the patch is that there is a Chinese oil equipment supplier that is a very large company. You will read in the uh, article that they're publicly traded, and they have accusations against them, and they brought that, uh, if that was brought into Oklahoma, uh, uh, the Oklahoma, uh, whoever they had the head attorney would be the state, the uh, attorney general, I guess, brought this suit. Who knows? You read the article. It's pretty amazing, though. It's pretty amazing that it's happening. It's definitely, let me put it this way, it's definitely something we want to follow. And we might make this a, uh, a short dispatch, big dispatch here. It would probably be like dispatch 104, maybe. Uh, there's, but there's more oil stuff in here. Uh, and Link, and Link is the company that formed when Devon uh, spun off their midstream assets, which is their pipeline and teamed up with a Dallas company called Crosstex Energy. So the new uh, company called Enlink, which Devon basically controls, is headquartered down in Dallas, but it's, it's Devon controls it, which is good. Good way for Devon to play the uh, midstream spinoff. Um, look at this. Here's a nice big fat article. Go get you some of this. Domestic oils discount shrinks as pipeline projects cut stockpiles. This is a probably haven't read it yet. But I'll go down a limb and say it probably does a pretty good job of basically explaining uh, how the sort of supply and demand goes. Um, let's just tease you with the first uh, the first paragraph. Then you can go out and buy the paper and read the rest and help this gentleman out. He's beautiful. Crude oil stockpiles in Cushing are at their lowest levels in two years after new pipeline projects have begun moving oil more easily to refineries along the Gulf Coast. Uh, yeah, interesting. Uh, it's in this pipe. These pipeline projects had been expected to narrow the price gap between West Texas Intermediate and uh, International uh, Brent crude price, which is a pretty interesting thing. So basically, even though this is an oversimplification, there are two prices for oil in the world. One is set on West Texas Intermediate, somewhere around the Cushing area, uh, that price for oil, and then the other one is set on, uh, I think, out in the seas of the Brent Sea, perhaps, over somewhere around uh, London, maybe. But, uh, you know, Brent crude, the international Brent crude price and the West Texas Intermediate price, those are two prices for oil, because oil is a global commodity. It's a beast as we spin you out and you get to check out, boom, you, the beast you. Um, so you want to read that article and then check this out. This is also worth mentioning. Continental's plan in Bakken is validated. This is basically just like the Permian has their pancakes you can drill into for layers of syrup. They actually pulled maple syrup out of the Permian uh, basin and it's actually from Crown Royal, believe it or not, kids. Uh, at uh, 8 minutes and 31 seconds into the hour here at K-Rig, I made my first joke, so here we go. Continental's planning the Bakken. They've got their own pancake. The Bakken has its own pancake. And suffice to say, Continental's very happy with the results of a test they did with what's known as the Hawkinson Project. I'd recommend you read about that. The Hawkinson Project will probably um, maybe help boost Continental's uh, stock performance uh, for the next year. Maybe it'll double again. It's already doubled once or twice. It'll, it'll double for a little while longer. Maybe. Who knows? No one knows for sure. There's no guarantees, but uh, I can assure you that Continental's leading the effort. The, the uh, Hank Ham's uh, army of the Bakken is marching. Let's put it that way. That's, and we're gonna, we might do a little uh, tracker. We might start tracking Hank Ham's army of the Bakken. Eh, maybe, maybe that's what we're doing right now. What do you think of that? We just did it. There. Boom. Get out of here. Now, uh, before we close it out, you know what uh, you have to have and you love it is um, Oil Patch Jazz. That's huge. Look at the size of this today. Look at the size of those oil logs. Those are monsters. I don't know if you can handle it. I don't know if we've got time to do it. There's a gentleman coming in here that may uh, want to talk, but we'll see. We'll just riff on this. We're going nutso. Uh, here's the completions from uh, Oil Patch Jazz, Canadian County, starting it out at the top of the key, Devon Energy. Right there, 53 barrels a day, went down 17,000 feet. Another, another Devon Energy well was uh, 52 barrels a day, and it went down uh, 
about 16, no, they went down about 17,000 feet. Uh, Carter County, you got the uh, big boom on citation oil, 16 barrels a day. Ellis County, Lenormand operating, 180. Lenormand operating, 435. Lenormand operating, 100. Lenormand operating, 357. And Lenormand operating, 360. So there's a cat uh, drilling pretty good in Ellis County, Lenormand operating. And he's got the chuck whale going pretty good there. Um, whoever they are, they might be doing pretty good. Garfield County, you've got... Um, Garfield County shows Wickland Petroleum at 103 barrels. Hughes has Chris Will... Oh, by the way, if you can hear them, the bells of boom are in the background. But they'll be difficult to hear. Uh, in Hughes County, you got Chris Will Energy, Dry Hole. That's not good, kids. But they only went down 1,200 feet. Uh, Jefferson County, you got the DeHart Company. Um, not a whole lot showing there. Logan County. Uh, Logan County, remember, kids, that's where um, Osage drills. And... In Logan County, you have uh, Devon Energy at 300 uh, barrels a day, and you've got another one by Devon at 81 barrels a day. Uh, then you go down to Noble County, you got GK Production, uh, not showing much there. Red Fork Investment, I think they're out of Australia, 31 barrels a day. Payne County, more Devon action, 71 barrels a day. More Red Fork action, 168 barrels a day. So in Payne County, Red Fork uh, took, 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 took the win there, uh, the race. Uh, Roger Mills, look at this, Lenormand again, 499 barrels. Lenormand up here, 236 barrels. Lenormand, 376. Okay, they're drilling in Roger Mills in Ellis County, which is north, which is western Oklahoma. They're going down to 14,000 feet. I don't know if they're in the granite wash or what, but they're popping it pretty good. Uh, let's finish off. Boy, we got some more completions here, and we can get all this done. Alfalfa County, you know where it is, you love it. 405 barrels a day. It's pretty good by ARP, Oklahoma. Interesting name for the well, the Magpie. Huh. In Creek County, you got Veteran Exploration. They're popping it at seven barrels a day. You got another Veteran Exploration. There's 13 barrels a day. Ain't nothing wrong with that. That's also only 3,000 feet they're going down. Ain't nothing wrong with that. That might make money all day. I don't know. Garfield County, once again, get ARP uh, hitting 84 barrels a day. And ARP, uh, there's just a horizontal hole there, so not much. That's open for a joke. Grant County, uh, once again, ARP, ARP, ARP. They've got, uh, okay, check out these weird energy companies' names that are suddenly showing up in the oil logs. ARP, 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 Oklahoma. Uh, the, these well names are priceless. You, you're going to want to follow this. The Bulldog, the Afghan, the Ruby. Okay, that's that's someone that uh, maybe that might be someone that um, maybe someone that shows horses and they also are into into drilling oil now. This is an oil boom, folks, so you never know. But clearly, the uh, the, the well names are the Bulldog, the Afghan, and the Ruby. And, th and then you go down and you get the next uh, company drilling is CH4 Energy. Now, not that that it is, but I'm going to go have fun and say that it's Channel 4 Energy. And they're getting three barrels a day. So Channel 4 Energy is drilling in Grant County, and they're getting uh, three barrels a day. What do you think of that? What are you going to do, sue me for my assets? Uh, Cisco Operating, 138, nothing wrong with that. Jefferson County is uh, HMD Oil, one barrel a day, not much there. Uh, in Logan County, uh, we've talked about that before, Osage, and Osage's partner Slauson. Slauson right here hitting 140 barrels a day. Sundance Energy, I think they're also maybe a... Uh, Australian company, 640 barrels a day. That's pretty big, folks. Sundance Energy, 640 barrels a day. Someone look at them. Uh, Roger Mills, once again, Lee Norman, 70 barrels a day. Stevens County, Banner and Banner and Banner. Three wells, um, anywhere from two barrels a day to nothing. And then Twilight Energy rounds out the uh, oil logs today. The Twilight Energy, I'm sure, those are vampires. Uh, drilling for oil. Everyone else is in an oil boom, and it's three barrels a day in Stevens County. Go visit Twilight Energy, the vampire drillers. Uh, that's how we're going to wrap up and connect crude and consciousness here from this lovely dispatch. Uh, well, I think we'll call this one the Confluence, and uh, we don't know. The Confluence, and at 14 minutes and 22 seconds past the hour, 321 boom, see ya.